Time for another episode of Comfort to Christmas, and we are that little bit nearer Christmas. Emily is getting more and more giddy as the days go on. She's been counting down, start watching Elf soon, mulled yeah. wine, you name it. But first, we thought we'd create some more recipes, just leaning into Christmas, giving you some amazing ideas, and today is no different. We are going to make the most delicious steak pie with lots of lovely red wine from our friends at Beefsteak. I want to talk to you about this. Now, our friends just around the corner at Dark House Roast make the most amazing coffee. They're actually based on our little business park in the Lake District, and they've come up with this lovely gift pack. And me and Emily thought, well, we ought to let you know about this, because what a beautiful gift. If you've got any friends or family with a passion for coffee, I certainly do. They've got lovely selection boxes of different coffees, Jury has popped in. Which one has he popped in for us? Dale Head. So it's named after one of the mountains down past Thirlmere. And I thought, you know what? Let's have a little look. We've got a newsletter coming out this week and it's all about coffee. And, you know, you don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds to make amazing coffee. This little thing called an AeroPress makes incredible coffee. And what I've done is I've put some in, I've put the boiling water in, and I thought we'd start with a little coffee first. So all you do is you press it down nice and gently. So this is where I convince you to try black coffee, Emily, which I know you don't yeah. normally do, do you? No. But when you buy really lovely coffee like this, actually drinking it black, it's really fruity and you actually really taste it. So it's got a vacuum in here and it, honestly, it makes the best cup of coffee. Really simple, there's no moving parts really. It's just, you put the filter in, you put the coffee in, pour the water in, plunge it down. There we go. And you get a really lovely, clean cup of coffee. Here you go, have a taste of that. Tell me what you think. So this is Dale Head Roast This. It'll be a single origin coffee, roasted in Keswick. Oh yeah, like that. What do you think? Nice, lovely. Mm. So, got any friends or family that like it? Get on their website, what's their website called? Darkhouse.co.uk, pay him a visit. He's a lovely guy, he's our jury, and he'd love to roast you some coffee. Anyway, let's get on with cooking. So, a beautiful, ultimate steak pie. It's gonna be a pot pie, so we're not putting pastry on the bottom, and I'll tell you why in a minute. And then I'm going to show you how to make the most delicious saffron risotto, the ultimate comfort food. But first, the ultimate steak pie. Okay, right. So we're going to start with our vegetables. So I've got onion, carrots, celery, garlic, rosemary, bay, and thyme. They're like the, the ultimate base of flavors, these. So let me just get a knife and then we'll get start chopping. Right, four litre shallow pan. You want lots of space, okay? And then we'll get chopping first. So I've only got red onion. Normally I would use white for this, but that's all I've got. I sent my wife shopping and she bought the wrong onions. So Emma, it's your fault, not mine. So chop them. Hello, Pip. I'll get to the carrot in a minute, I promise. You can say hello. Bear with me. You cannot pick a knife up and a chopping board and chop vegetables without the dog being here. Can we? Hey? You think there's something good going? Right. Let's get a little bit of olive oil into the pan. Really important you get everything going, okay? Like a steak pie, Emily? Oh, I do, I yeah. I thought you might. You'll like this one. You will. Right. Onions in. Now remember, if you want any of today's recipes or the recipes from the whole series, 
Emily has worked tirelessly on this book. How many pages are we up to? 100. 100 page cookery book. It's all free. All you have to do is type free book in the comments below. It will launch into Facebook Messenger. Carlos will show how it works down this side. Follow the instructions. Sign up to our newsletter and in return we will send you the ebook. Beautiful images, lovely recipes. My favourite image, I think, is the pudding. Syrup it's on the cover, sponge. isn't it? Yeah. Syrup sponge. It's good. It is good. Right. Carrots. So these give you a little bit of sweetness. What's your favourite recipe on the book so far? On that, oh, I do, I do like the sponge syrup recipe. What's your favourite image? Image, ooh, I think it's got to be that or the cheese toasty. I thought you were going to say the cheese, cheese toasty. Really the nice. cheese toasty image is beautiful. Emily shot such a great image for that one. Really, really good. I think everyone's going to be making pickled blackberry toasties. Now remember, if it's not blackberry season anymore, but you can get frozen blackberries, or if you've been out and you've picked them, you can pickle them from frozen. All right? Right. Carrots in. Don't worry, Pip, I haven't forgotten you. She's like, her eyes are burning holes in me. <laughs> Aren't they? Hey? You ready? <gasps> Come on then. Say hello. There you go. Off you go. She likes a carrot, but she likes it peeled. Mm -hmm. She's got very posh, our dog. <laughs> she won't just eat a carrot from the fridge anymore. Has to be peeled. Right, so nice and fine with the carrots. I like to chop them quite fine. I want the beef to be the star of the show on this recipe, not carrots, all right? but they add a nice sweetness to the sauce as it cooks. Right, celery adds savouriness, okay? So just nick the ends off. Cut them in half and then cut them into sticks. That didn't last long, did it, Pip? If you can't, you, if you can't get celery for any reason. Mm -hmm. Is anything that you can use as like a, obviously if it adds that savoury note. You could add a bit more onion into it, you could add fennel into it. Fennel and red wine work really well together with beef, that sort of slight aniseed flavour. Um, you could chop some celeriac and add that, that gives a similar flavour. You could use celery salt if you want that sort of same savoury flavour but you can't get hold of it. If you've got it in the cupboard, use it. So group them all together and then again, chop them nice and fine. I don't know whether you like celery, do you? Can you give a dog celery? I'm not sure what, actually. Best not, just in case. Mm. Right. Okay, so, look, you can see that celery. Can you see how finely I've chopped that, Emily? Yeah. Yeah? And then in it goes. Right, let's knock the temperature down a little bit. Now, let's stir this around a bit. There we go, starting to get a little bit of colour on those. Then in with some salt. Do you like my salt pot? I do like the Look, salt pot. Look, perfectly seasoned. I stole it from the house. <laughs> Don't tell Emma. Right, so what we need to do is just get these vegetables going and then I'm going to talk beef with you. Okay, now let's get the beef into the story here. Oh, so I've got shin of beef. For me, this is the perfect cut for a pie. Here you go, Pip. It is rich, it takes a long cut, but what what it needs, it absolutely delivers back to you in bucket loads in terms of flavour. And it, economy, so I bought enough for two big pies because I wanted to make one ready for photography and I wanted to make one on the show. And I think, was it £30 we spent on shin of beef? Yeah. So it's £15 in terms of cost of beef. And for that, you get all this meat and you get half a shin and it's got marrow bone in it and that's why I wanted it. This rich marrow bone, this is the good stuff. 
It is golden. It is so tasty. And if you can get it, add it in because it just adds this amazing richness. It's like beefy butter, basically. It's so good. Right, let me just get a bowl and we'll transfer that in. Or out even. We'll transfer it out, won't we, Emily? Yeah. Right, let's just, because I want the pan. I don't want to lose any flavour. So, and also, the reason why I'm taking the vegetables out is we won't have enough space to fry everything off. Okay? So, let me just pop that onto there. Now, I've got my beef. I've got some plain flour. So, I'm just going to mix that over there. And let's... The reason why we add the flour is it means that the sauce will thicken then. Okay? And you don't have to add any thickeners at the end. It just subtly, gently gives a sort of a richness to the sauce. I'm just going to cut that in half, that piece. Don't cut your beef into too smaller chunks. Let it, you know, let it be chunks of beef in this, right? Okay, so you definitely can't have this pit. So it can just break apart as it slowly cooks? It will just give, give away. It'll give in. Yeah. Right, the beef is just starting to colour. Can you see that there? Yeah. The important bit is you don't fiddle around and move it about. Leave it still until it's got the colour, all right? Don't keep stirring the pan and moving it about. Just let it caramelise. I mean, if I... Which camera shall I show you this bit to, Emily? We're on the camera, yeah. This bit here, this dark caramelisation is flavour and colour later, all right? So don't turn it over until it's that colour. Oh, look at that. Have you had shin of beef before? Uh, I've probably had it. We've probably had it. Yeah. Do you remember when we did that big hammer steak? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that hammer steak is this same thing. Oh, but, you cook that quite but it was all on the bone. Oh, right. And you cut like that. that. Quite quickly, don't you, hammer steak? No, no, no. It, it cooked for a long time. Oh, right, okay. With shin. So the harder a muscle works, the longer the cook, generally the cheaper the cut as well. So the cheaper the cut of beef, the longer it requires to cook, the more tasty it'll be. So cheap cuts are good. You just gotta treat them right. You could put all this in a slow cooker if you wanted to. Tot no problem at all. Right. So now we're getting some colour on there. Let's get some aromatics in. So I've got whole bulbar garlic. Nick the top off just like that and put it in. Yeah? And then later we'll squeeze it all in and it'll be amazing. The depth of flavour that you'd get will be incredible. Bay leaf, just chuck. What have I got? Three or four bay leaves there. I've just picked them from the garden. And then I've got some fresh thyme, just a nice rough chop. Thyme and rosemary are what beef absolutely love, and it's perfect for this time of year. Okay? I would always cook more of this than you need as well, because it'll freeze perfectly. You'll just, you know, you could make stew and dumplings out of it. You could make pasties out of it. You can just have it as a stew, whatever you like. But it's perfect. The perfect reason to buy more than you need. Okay. So, back in with our vegetables. So you can see why I put them in later, because now there's not as much space in the pan, okay? And then what we're gonna do is get our beefsteak. Now, we're working with the guys there at Beefsteak Club. They do the most incredible Malbec. If you want a beautiful red wine to drink with your food, this pound for pound is the most delicious red wine. I mean, you started out on red wine on this one, didn't you? Because yeah. you weren't a red wine drinker until like you tried this. Yeah, it's good. You can get it in all the supermarkets in the UK. It is really easy to get hold of. And actually, it's a really distinctive label, isn't it? Yeah. You'll notice this when you're in the supermarket. Put one in your basket. It's yeah. absolutely delicious. Right, in we go. Save half a bottle I've put in there. And then I've got a good quality beef stock cube. You know, one of the sort of the gel pots rather than dry. Yeah. 
And you can get like rich beef ones, ones that have like really well cooked. And have they got more flavour in the gel ones? I think so, yeah. Because they are exactly, if I made a beef stock at home and boiled it down and down and down, that's exactly what I'd get. Mm. And that's what we used to do in like Michelin star restaurants. We would make beef stock, we'd have a gallon and we'd boil it down to a pint. Mm. And the natural gelatins in it is what sets it. Right. and allows you to then cut it into cubes and drop it into food and you just get such an incredible flavour. I think that one's a no one. They're very good. And then I'm just going to add some water, enough just to come to the surface. I'm going to bring it to the boil. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our marrow bone. Now this marrow bone is going to go in the middle like that. And I'm going to put the whole thing in the oven. And I'm going to let that cook for three to four hours, at about 150 degrees, until the beef is tender. The, beef, the bone will have gone brown and the marrow bone will roast. And when you lift that bone out, the marrow bone should just drop in and give you that incredible richness. And that's what we're trying to achieve, like this ultimate beefiness in a pie. And then I'm going to show you how to make the most amazing pastry. Right, this is one I made earlier. Just look at that. The marrow bone is all roasted and soft. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And then I'm just going to grab some tongs. Let's get this garlic in because it is just sat there and roasted. Can you see that, Emily? Yeah. You know what's coming, don't you? Yeah. That way? A little bit lower. Yeah. Just squeeze all that lovely garlic out. <gasps> Oh, give me some toast and that, that spread. Well, you might, <laughs> funny you might say that, Emily, <laughs> because I thought you might like to try the marrow bone. Oh, yeah, because it's not often you get to try that sort of thing on its own. And I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna get rid of the garlic skin. But what I'm gonna treat you, since it's nearly Christmas, <laughs> since it's nearly Christmas, right. This is what, what, if you've cooked it, you're allowed to do this, all right? Find some garlic. You're not on a date tonight, are you, Emily? No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> and spread one of those cloves on there. Oh my God. Hang on, not finished yet. Then dip. Have a little try of that. Carlos? Yeah, please. Yeah. I haven't asked you yet. <laughs> Just try that and tell me what you think. Here you go. Mm. Yeah? Right, now I've got some marrow bone. Have I? Or is it all in? It might have all gone. <laughs> it might have dropped in, but we'll see. See what I can get you. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh. There you go, try the marrow bone. So what you'll find is that a lot of it has dripped in and it's added a richness, okay? Oh my dears. Do you like that? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you ordering marrow bone for Christmas? <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? Really, really beautiful. So what we're gonna do, let's get a spoon. Let's just get this beef. So if I put that there, Emily, is that gonna work? Yep. Yeah. So, as I said earlier, we're going to do a pot pie because I want to serve it with the shin. Because if you've gone to all this effort and you've got this beautiful marrow bone in there, you want people to know you've gone to all that effort. So put it in the middle. And if, if we were doing a pastry base, I think the bone would just break it. So we're going to do what they call a pot pie. I think, called, I think it's American, a pot pie, isn't it? Mm. So just lift the beef. And you can see chunks of beef in here because we didn't cut it too small. And that's what's gonna make an amazing pie. Okay? What did you think of the gravy Ooh, and the garlic? Yeah. Was it good? I could just eat that. Yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> so, once I've got all the beef in. That gravy looks so good. Serious, isn't it? <laughs> See, I could just drink the gravy. Yeah. Give me a loaf of bread and the gravy and I'm happy. Ooh. Right, let's pour all this in. Top 
Told you it was the ultimate steak pie, didn't I? Yeah. Okay, right. So, I've done that for a reason, because I'm gonna leave that and let it just cool down a little bit while we make the pastry. So let's get rid of this chopping board. And we'll make some proper pastry, some proper Yorkshire pastry. So, let's grab a bigger mixing bowl, I think. Okay, so I've got 500 grams of plain flour in here. And then pastry you do is a two to one ratio. So 500 grams of flour, 250 grams of fat. Now, if I'm gonna do this right, I've got butter and lard, half and half. But you never cook with lard, do you? No. No. If you're going to do this, do it right, I think. Do it right. You don't really get lard much anymore. But do you get lard, Carlos, in uh, Spain? Do you cook with lard? What is lard? Rendered beef fat. Yeah. You do? Yeah. So just rub the lard in to the flour. Okay? It's a perfectly normal pastry ratio. There's nothing any different. The only thing I've done is just add that lard into there and butter ratio. So it's not too buttery. But what, what happens with lard is it makes a pastry really crisp and lovely. And it's, you know, you're not going to make this every week. You're probably going to make this, you know, once a year. Your cardiologist isn't going to allow you to have it too often. So get your fingertips in and just keep rubbing the butter and the lard into the flour. You kind of want a crumble texture, you know, as if you're going to pour it over your apples for an apple crumble, that kind of texture. And just sort of pick it up and just gently rub the two together. Try and get a little bit of height into it, get a bit of air into it. Such an easy pastry to make as well. Plain flour, butter, margarine, lard, whatever you prefer. There we go. Just don't over mix it because we're going to go in with the cold water in a minute. Right, so can you see that sort of crumbly texture? Let's make a little well in the middle and then I've got some cold water. Now, it's quite warm in this studio kitchen now. So you're gonna find that, although Emily probably doesn't agree with me, if I've made her up the door. <laughs> it's the constant battle between Emily and I. I'm hot, she's cold, and then she's hot, and then I'm cold, and, and so we go on. We get there, don't we? Right, so add a little bit of cold water, and just with a metal spoon, just bring your pastry together, okay? Ideally, you would rest your pastry in the fridge for about 20 minutes to give it time to just sort of relax and, and it's easier to roll out. So now that I've got this pastry like so, let's turn it out and then we'll give it a little, a little knead. Not too much, but it does just need to bring together. It's a lot more pliable, I don't know whether it can maybe contribute to the lard. I don't know, actually. It really is just about getting that right amount of water in mm. and just sort of the lightest of touches and just sort of work it. I remember when I worked in a bakery, I would deal with four kilos of pastry at a time, so it would be like this. Good Lord. And on busy days, they'd double it. <laughs> and Christmas, they'd treble it, and it's just working pastry all day long. Okay, good. Right, let's just get a little bit of flour, just so that we can work it. Okay, so you don't want too much flour. What you don't want to do is dry the pastry out, okay? Let's just roll it out. Now remember, if you've got any questions at all, please post them in the comments below. I will answer them as quickly as I can. And if you want the free book that comes with the series, just type free book into the comments. It'll launch into Facebook Messenger and you can get it there. And we also have a YouTube channel now as well. So if you use YouTube like I do, 
subscribe to our channel. There's loads of stuff on there for you. There's shorts, there's long form, there's everything. So just go to Peter Sidwell's kitchen. Peter Sidwell's kitchen. And you can get the YouTube channel there. Right, so I've just rolled a piece out. Now that's not the top. What I'm going to do is create a little collar almost. So let's just cut. Can you see this all right still, Emily? Yeah, yeah we're good? Right. So I'm going to, because we're doing a pot pie, if you were doing a normal pie, you'd have pastry underneath, wouldn't you? But we're not, we're gonna do a pot pie. So what I'm gonna do is lay some pastry there on that, just a little overhang on each side and do the same on this side. Bit of an overhang. And then we'll do the same on this side. So now we're gonna have something for our pastry to grab onto, which always helps. You pop the pie with the bottom or pie without? Well, I'm not, I'm not picky, I don't mind. You know, you'll just, you just want the middle, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And pastry to dunk in the gravy. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. So this kind of creates like a, something to st for it to stick to basically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take an egg and then we will just mix that together. I feel like this is a your dad kind of pie, this. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. A Cumbrian pie, this. It is. Slab pie. Yeah. <laughs> right. Don't knock it till you've tried it. No, I'm, well, yeah. <laughs> right, so the other piece of pastry. Let's just roll it out. Okay. It's gonna be, you're gonna like this pastry. Have you had lard pastry before? I've never had lard pastry before. <gasps> you're gonna like it. <laughs> right. Okay, let's just nick that bit off there. So about half a centimeter thick. Don't, you only got the top, so don't worry if it's a little bit thicker than you might normally do. Which way should we go? Right. We're gonna go that way. Check my, uh... oh, hang on. So if I, if I roll that there, and then what I'm gonna have to do is cut across there for my bone to stick out, yeah? Okay. Could we move the pie to the middle? I will. There? Close to you. Yeah. There we go, it's not like I'm at a critical point or anything nope. where it could all go wrong. There we go. Oh. Right. Oh. <laughs> that looks good. A way to a Cumbrian woman's heart, this <laughs> pie. Never mind Tinder. <laughs> Slabpie.com. <laughs> Right. You are unreal. Oh dear. Right. Okay. So you want to make sure your marrow bone doesn't fall over, but that's not my problem. <laughs> Egg wash, and then we're going to get this straight into our hot oven. All it needs to cook is the pastry on the top, all right? You don't need to worry about soggy bottoms with this pie at all, do you? Because it is all about the filling. It's all in there. It's basically the most incredible stew with a pastry top and you're done. Right, once you've got a really nice even crust, Emily says I don't have to trim the edges, just that little bit of overhang there. It's a bit too much on there. But we're not gonna crimp this pie. We're gonna leave it, because it's rustic. It's got a massive big shin of bone in the, coming out of the top. So we're gonna leave it as it is, and we're gonna get this into the oven. I'm gonna bake it 180 degrees for about 45 minutes until the pastry is golden, crisp, and beautiful. Right, in we go. I'll see you in 45 minutes. Now while that's baking, this is how I make my delicious saffron risotto. First thing, get a nice big heavy pan onto the heat with a splash of olive oil, then add in your garlic. 
add your chopped onions and some diced celery. Make sure it's nice and fine. Stir that all together. Add in your risotto rice, a little bit of salt and your saffron. Pour in a little bit of white wine, get the whole thing going. Stir together before adding your stock a little at a time and then cook it out. Keep stirring. When the moisture is evaporated and soaked into the rice, add some more stock. It's going to take about 20 to 25 minutes of keeping stirring, adding stock, then finish with Reggiano Parmigiano, a little butter and stir in to make that lovely, rich, delicious risotto. Add in that little bit of butter for extra richness because that's going to make it yummy. Serve it out on a big plate and top with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil for that lovely silkiness and a little bit more Parmesan cheese. Right, here you go. This is what I call a pie. Look at that, Emily. What do you think of that? Yeah. Right. Beautiful crispy pastry and the most amazing stew underneath. It's the perfect pot pie. Right. Are you ready for a little taste, Emily? Always. Right. Oh, sounds crispy. There we go. Let's grab a plate and see what we can do. Can I do it there? Yeah, yeah. Right. Let's lift the pastry off first. I'm just going to pop that there. And then... Look at that. Look at that. Can you see how tender that is? That's there we go. Right, so let's get this filling on. I mean, just look how tender that is. Oh, there's a nugget of garlic there as oh. well. That's the good stuff. And then let's put our pastry back on top. Oh. And there you go. Now, oh, I best get two forks for this <laughs> one, I know, Emily. Yep. This is the ultimate beef pie, the perfect comfort food. I'm going to leave that bit of garlic there for Emily to try. <laughs> but. <laughs> Breaks my little heart to give that away. <laughs> Get your little gizzards around that. Honestly, the most delicious pie. If you've got lots of friends coming round, it's such an easy way to feed them all. And oh my God, they're going to thank you for this. It is the most delicious pie I think I've ever made. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next episode.